it's going to be hard oh, to follow. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you can do it. But uh, today, um, I think I would like to speak a little bit. We can do the lines. Yeah, I'll turn the lines back on. Yeah. Um, well, I've been looking forward to this for a few weeks, and I was really not sure what I had to offer as far as like advice informing you or teaching you about photography. Um, I certainly don't think that my work is necessarily interesting enough, or as an artist, I'm interesting enough just to stand up here and tell you about myself the whole time. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to tell you some things that I wish had been told to me when I was sitting where you're sitting now. So first things first. You're probably not as good as you think you are. So, <laughs> and more than likely, you're going to look back and think, man, I sucked. <laughs> and you're probably going to be right. But that's okay. You should suck right now. <laughs> it's true. Most of every artist who is set where you sat now sucked. Richard Avedon, Andy Warhol, I'm sure at one point, like Caravaggio, all these people suck. <laughs> I do. I did, and it, I, it's, it's a fight every day to do work that you're proud of. But that's, that's the whole thing. It's okay. Don't be offended by your lack of genius. I believe that genius can be made and can be created. I believe that through understanding your role as an artist and a creator, and how that relates to society, and how it relates to the people who eventually pay you to sustain your lifestyle as an artist is essential to make your work rise above the suck. <laughs> One thing I dislike the most are condescending people. So like today, if I come off as condescending, I just have to be content with that because I don't speak to you as a highly successful artist. I just speak to you as a human being through my faults, my failures. I've learned the hard way to become more happy, more creative, and more fulfilled and able to better able to understand and navigate living the life of a so-called artist, whatever that means. So what do I really have to offer? What do you really have to offer? I think it's important that we ask and continually to ask this question to ourselves all the time. Each and every one of us has a very distinct quest as an artist that should hopefully, eventually, lead us to a better understanding and fulfillment of ourselves as true creative people. Now, that's the quest for El Dorado, it's the quest for the Holy Grail, it's that quest and journey for that mythical thing, that creative life that you all are about to embark on. It will take work, it will take a lot of work, hard work, it will take time, it will take sacrifice, it will absolutely, positively, 100% take failure, and a lot of failure. Embrace your failure comfortable with your failures. That's going to happen so many times before you ever catch a glimpse of what you can consider success or a victory. So if you're going to work hard, if you're going to spend time failing, if you're going to spend time putting yourself on the line, make it personal. Make the things that you do, the work that you do, personal. Invest your creativity in something that you truly love to do. Never create to please other people. Create to make yourself happy, to create from here. Stop caring what other people think of what you do. Endeavor to be honest with your work, because it's so much easier to sell what you do and sell your ideas if you believe in them than it is just to sell a pretty picture. I hope it's already become evident that when you leave here, if you want to be a working artist, that the actual creation of your artwork will take about 30% of your time. The other 70% will be focused on creating a business to sustain the work that you do. Please understand that you have to know and understand and follow the basic rules of business to be successful as a working artist. Many of you may go get a job, and that's great. I've had many jobs. It's nice to have a paycheck at the end of the week, but I encourage everyone here to think about and to strive to become independent. Independent. The world needs more artists, in my opinion. It needs less employees. Be creative. Strive for that independence. Strive to be an independent artist. You'll find
find yourself in the role of a salesman more than you ever thought you would? But that was uncomfortable for me, and it still is. This is uncomfortable for me, but I think it's important. But it becomes easier the more passionate you are about your work and about what you do. It's easier to become passionate if your creating work comes from deep inside of yourself. I am in the position that you're in right now because time is truly on your side. Most of you here have everything in front of you. You should look at this fact as a weapon and wield that weapon wisely. Wisely, but not conservatively. And unless you're truly blessed and fortunate, this will be one of the very last times when you have the ability to do absolutely anything you want to do. The world won't give you that for very much longer. After you leave here, you have the ability to do anything you want to do. Take advantage of that. Enjoy your restless youth. Take the big risks. Take risks with your work. Take risks with your life choices. Go big now. You might fail, but it's not the end of the world. You're at the beginning, and even if you completely flop, you still have time to learn from your mistakes and start again. Be bold. Be brave. Don't worry about looking like a fool. Doing what you love. More than likely, even if you do look like a fool doing what you love, people will admire you for taking the big risk, so go for it anyway. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Fear is the executioner of creativity. Fear is the enemy of love. Fear loves company. And I encourage each and every one of you to run away with all your might, with all your power, from fear and towards your honest true self as a creative individual. Run towards the truth of your humanity, because there's the truth that you deserve the golden ring. You deserve the ticket to ride. You deserve a life free from that fear, a creative life full of fulfillment and artistic pleasure. You deserve all the good stuff, but rest assured, nobody owes you anything. And they'll be happy to tell you that too. Don't go through life thinking that they do. Only you can give yourself the good stuff. No one has the power to make you happy. No one has the power to bring you down. Your life is yours, and you should live it to a very high standard. Settle for nothing short of true commitment to the things that you do. Commit to the life of an artist. You will find great reward and fulfillment you never dreamed or expected. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about something that isn't talked about necessarily enough in art school. Money. Money is really important. You have to have money. <laughs> you have to have money. Dreams. There's no money tree. That's true. Money's not going to come from dreams. Money comes from hard work. But money will not make you happy. And you shouldn't spend your life chasing money. I spent some good long years chasing money. Doing work that I thought would give it to me. And if I had enough, I could buy the time to do the work that I truly wanted to do. That doesn't work that way. But in the end of doing, you know, doing that, getting in that cycle, I found myself unhappy, depressed, unfulfilled. And quite honestly, I never understood the simple fact that if you really commit, if you truly put 100% of your effort in doing what you truly love to do, and do what you would do if what you would do... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try, to be, I try to be poetic. <laughs> commit to doing what you truly love. If you do what you would do, if money were no object, then eventually the money will follow. I found that to be true because I think it's the passion which makes that true. People love passionate people and your work will be better for it. Um, being an artist is certainly a rich quick scheme. It's absolutely not. The life of an artist is very much a lifestyle choice. And depending on what you think money can do for you, it can be a happy life, or it can be a drudgery. Please don't work for money, but please don't work for free. I can be happy to recommend this book, 
It's called The Best Business Practices for Photographers. Um, and it, I think it applies across the board to any artist. It's not really a page turner, but the information in this has been invaluable to me. And I, prefer, I still refer to it all the time. So I'm going to leave this at USAO for you guys to look through it. I encourage you to do it. Um, it's a good book. So it's an invaluable reference. And you need to use it. It's practical, and I always refer to it. Too many times I see artists undervalue themselves. I see artists as a whole undervalue us as artists, who we are and what we represent. And rest assured, we're under attack. The arts in America are under attack. Generally, society views the arts and artists as minimally valuable to the health and well-being of society. We are oftentimes looked at as a footnote to the important issues of the day. I believe not only do we have more to offer than to be an afterthought, or as creators of decoration that can complement Aunt Sally's new red sofa, <laughs> we can be a cure and a solution for the lack of soul and a lack of direction in our society. But to achieve that status, we have to, we have to place more value on ourselves and on our work. It's really no wonder why society undervalues artists when oftentimes we undervalue ourselves. The degree you receive from this university is as important as any other degree offered from this university. The amount of money over the course of your life your degree represents can be equal or can exceed any of that of any other degree offered from this university. Price your work accordingly to the lifestyle that you want to live. Price your work accordingly to your effort, your time, and your ideas. They all have value. Do not underprice or undervalue any of those things. If you do, you're contributing to the problem and not the solution. You're making it hard for yourself and for your fellow artists to live the life we've earned and to live the life we deserve. This goes back to the point I made about business earlier. You have to understand the cost of doing business as an artist and work to make what you do profitable and sustainable. A few years ago, when I truly embarked on my journey as a photographer, I asked myself, how can I learn everything I need to know to sustain myself? It was, I was fortunate enough to be able to contact some local photographers in Oklahoma City whom I admired and respected, and I found they were very willing and open to talk and share ideas and share what got them to the point where they were. It was a great experience in providing me with invaluable knowledge that only the experience of those photographers could give me at that point. I spent a little over three years as a wedding photographer and a commercial photographer in Oklahoma City, and I built for myself a pretty good lifestyle. Um, I was shooting for local fashion agencies, local clothing, clothing companies. I was doing promos and album covers and videos for musicians. I had the opportunity to work with some really cool clients. And having these years to grow, learn how to deal with people, learn how to deal with people who aren't artists, was essential for my development as a photographer and as a creative person. Last year, I made the decision to go to New York City to pursue a career as a portrait and fashion photographer. I found photographers there and artists there open and willing to share also. But the fact is, I mean, the artists believe that New York City is the land of milk and honey for artists. It's the land of blood, sweat, and tears for artists, absolutely. I worked harder than I ever had, spending most of my time hammering out model portfolio work and headshots, no vacation home in the Hamptons, no weekend trips to Paris, none of that cool stuff that you think maybe can exist for you at some point. <laughs> I went to zeros in my bank account. But I'm happier than I ever have been. I'm fulfilled as an artist like I never have been before. And now I'm at the point where I'll return in May and apply my experience in a bigger way, see photo rep representation, and my life as an artist will hopefully have a permanence that I've always sought. The road I took and forever will be long, winding, and glorious. Many times I didn't understand the challenges that face me on a day-to-day -day basis. I made many mistakes along the way. But I do know one thing, you just gotta keep working. Every day when you feel like, my art's not good enough, I'm not good enough, I can't do this anymore. Maybe I just need to go get a job, job. Keep your iron in the fire. Get up, go to work every day, paint, do photography, throw a pot, whatever you do. <coughs> keep your iron in the fire. Never, never, give up. 
As I look at you now, I can't see the ghost of my younger self sitting there. And if I could say one thing to him, it would be, hold on, hold on, it's okay. And it is, it's okay. And it's gonna be. And like I said earlier, you're about to embark on a great and wondrous journey. Your time here at USAO has been short. You may not realize that until years after you're gone, how short it truly was. Please don't take it for granted. The knowledge these folks here are trying to give you and bestow on you, take it to heart. It's an honor to receive the kind of education that you're receiving right now. But as amazing of an education as your instructors can provide you, there's a limit to what they can do. It's up to you to constantly continue your education, to seek out knowledge, be out with the artist, discuss your ideas, read, look, listen, believe in the transcendent power of art and the transcendent power that lies with each and every one of us. Believe in yourself, believe in your work, and when times get tough, hold on, it's gonna be okay.